When I first started watching Eurovision back in 2009, it was great. Alexander Ryback won it that year and I had no idea what to expect. While that's fun for the duration of songs, it can really cause drama once the voting gets underway. The real reason many of us watch it. I think they've won. I think the Ukraine have won. But always remember, anyone can win it. From my analysis of this year's competition, I hope that I can fine tune your expectations. Even if I get half of these right, I'll be happy. The 10th place in top 10 is always horrible to predict, and I found this choice super hard. As always, I'm gonna have to go with the unique and pick Slovenia's Sebi for this prize spot. I said to Eleanor that I would love to have this guy's role in his live performance because he literally does nothing besides pretend to play the guitar. Zala, on the other hand, is extraordinary. Her unconventional stare sided with her amazing vocals are why I place this 10th. What can I say? Great song, terrible live performance. Was actually my personal favourite going into this year's competition, but the second I saw that shirt, it dropped right down in my predictions. Mahmood has the unresolved issue where no one told him what to expect from Eurovision contestants. They want movement, they want the unexpected, and most importantly, they want to smile. I don't think the Hawaiian shirt will cut it this year for Mahmood, but I still love the song. Kino have brought to this year's Eurovision what I hope every entry brings, and that's a song that is designed to win. They self-funded their own music video and stage performance, and they also styled their song in a way which fits perfectly into the three minute time slot. The traditional Scandinavian Voik is an eye-opener. The only thing stopping the song being higher is their limited resources, but what they have done with what they have got is awesome, and I love the live performance on this song. Sweden have finished top 10 in Eurovision since 2014 and with John, I don't see this changing. His song was the first to receive 12 points from every jury member in the Swedish Melida Festival N, which is how they pick their acts for Eurovision. So naturally, you can expect Love to get there just in time for John, and he may even do better than this. For number six, I'm making my prediction based on controversy and not the song itself. Atari described themselves as an award-winning anti-capitalist BDSM techno dystopian performance art collective on their official Eurovision bio page, and you can expect all of that in plenty in the final. They have publicly expressed their dislike of the final being allowed to commence in Tel Aviv, and even said that they've debated protesting in the final. I didn't think they would until I saw their reaction to qualifying, where they stared blankly into the camera, showing no joy. So, I'm saying expect the unexpected with this unique entry, and it will get them a lot of votes. Now this has the one thing I love on Eurovision songs, and that's crazy dancing. This song is awesome, catchy, and Luca is incredibly lovable, both on stage and off. The mad dancing once the beat drops is performed in plenty throughout this live performance and I can see many, many people voting for it. This is the first time in a while that Switzerland have qualified for the final and I hope it does well. This song is like Marmite and I personally love it. The reason I want to place it fourth is all down to the live performance. Kate and her supporting dancers literally swing themselves from side to side in elastic pulse. Not only is this incredible to watch, but super dangerous. Although I'm sure a lot of people will be hoping these poles snap, I hope her performance is flawless and she never has to swing on those poles again. Now, this one is Eleanor's favorite. Sergi entered the competition in 2016 as the favourite, but as I predict this time, he finished third. The song is arguably better than 2016, though the stage performance is slightly worse than his incredible climb to the top of the stage last time out. 
Nevertheless, Sergi is a Eurovision superstar and is almost impossible to dislike. His live performances are near enough perfection every turn and always show off some sort of incredible staging. I would love to see him win, but politics will have a big hand to play on this one. Although I have placed this song second in my predictions, I think that the Netherlands hands down have the best song in the whole competition. Its beautiful catchy melody along with Duncan's ability to perfectly mirror the studio version on stage is why it was declared the favourite months and months before the competition even began. The only reason why I would not expect it to win is that the live performance is plain and simple. But as we saw with Portugal's 2017 entry, simple is sometimes better. There are very rare few cases where I properly enjoy the bookie's favourite and I would love to see it win. Balao is the symbol of those millions of young people all over the world who want to be free and unashamed to be outside the box. His style of fashion blows away any gender prejudice and the unselfishness of his performance by showing off other performers' difficult road to stardom in his live performance, perfectly examples why he is such an amazing person. This was one of the few entries into this year's competition that touched my heart in such a way, and it is the best song out of those few that did. So I really hope it wins this year's Eurovision Song Contest.